Welcome to video 6 Excel Labs Pivot Tables. You are the management accountant of World to the Welsh as stated in the instruction uh, sheet, a delicatessen retail company in Cardiff in Wales. You have just pulled a list of your food suppliers of your internal database because your manager asked you to provide several reports, each with a different focus. Since you suspect that your manager will want to have similar reports in the future, you intend to use pivot tables to make your task easier. You have been asked to provide the following. First, you should provide or produce a report, a list of products that have not shipped that were sold by a particular salesperson named Patrick Rechberger. Then you should provide a report in order to review the average price of the products Patrick has shipped in the first week of January listed by company. Now, in order to solve this task, we are going to use pivot tables. Let's first look at this big data table right here. This data table consists of a few thousand of data sets which consist of a company name, so these are the companies uh, the food is being shipped to, the country where they are in, the salesperson responsible for those sales, or the ID or the date, required date, the shipped date, which was particularly important for our purposes, the name of the product which was shipped, the unit price, the quantity, and the extended price, which is nothing else than the unit price times the quantity sold. So, we're trying to answer the question number one, which products have not been shipped yet, which have been sold by Bartels Reichberger, first by trying to sort the table. On the data tab, click sort. As you can see, a dialog box pops up, which contains the criteria which we're going to use in order to sort the table. It makes sense to first select the salesperson, so sort by salesperson, because we're interested in a particular sale salesperson, Patrick Rechberger, and then the shipped by date. So make sure that this this is selected, shipped date, leave everything else as it is and click OK. Now the table has been sorted according to our instructions however it would be a bit tedious to now scroll all the way up and down to look for that salesperson so what we're going to do is to apply a filter. You need to choose the correct row which is the header row in that case and you can select cell A1, B1, doesn't really matter, as long as the cell you select is in the header row. And then on the data tab, click filter. Now what has just happened was that each of those header, headers have received a filter function. If we click on the salesperson, you see what this is about. We see a list of all the salespeople we have. Now let's deselect the Select All option and select Patrick Reichberger only. Click OK. Now you see that only Patrick's sales have been selected. Now let's scroll all the way down and keep your eyes on the shipped date column, which is column G, and you'll see that the last three here have no shipped date, which indicates either it has not been entered, but we assume that this means that those products have not been shipped yet. So Rotten Scones, Camembert Pierrot, and Sirop Durable. To one company, Feinschmecker Delicatessen in Austria. So very good. This would basically already answer our first question, but we would be interested in more than that. 
particular because our manager might come along and ask for the data on other salespeople. Let's create a pivot table in order to do that. First, let's lift the filter on the salesperson. I click on Select All and OK. And move this all the way back up. Company name. There you go. Now, in order to create a pivot table, we need to go to the Insert tab and click Pivot Table. Another dialog box pops up. Let's have a look at the options. You need to verify first that under the Select a Table or Range, that the full table we have available is actually selected. This is the case. Excel has automatically recognized this. So everything from cell A1 to K2156 right here has been automatically selected. So that's good. We don't need to change anything there. Where do we want the pivot table report to be placed? We prefer a new worksheet because putting everything on one worksheet might confuse our analysis. Therefore, we pick new worksheet and we click OK. Now, as you can see, a new sheet has been added. Now, look to the right hand side to the pivot table field. There's a whole field list and it contains all the fields we can add to the report which is or which are the same as our headers in our table and we have various f areas here and we will going, we're going to have a look at a few of those first and foremost we focus on the choose fields to add to the report now what fields are we interested in we're interested in the salesperson we're interested in the shipped date, the product name, and the extended price, which, as we know, is the total. Excel has now automatically created a new table right here, and you can see how it's organized. Look here in the row labels area. So the salesperson is the first to come up, so everything underneath is organized by salesperson. Drilled down is organized into the shipping date, because this would be the next item right here. And then the product name. So what we can look up is what salesperson has shipped at what date, what product, and what was the total value of it. That is very interesting but we want to add a little more to it. Now just before we continue, just check if the sum of extended price has been added. So this is the, the actual numerical value, which is added to the values area. So this is the case. So everything is just as it should be. Now your manager calls you on your phone and ask for another report showing the average extended price instead of the sum. Now how would you be able to do this in the pivot table? It's not a problem at all. Click on the sum of extended price and select value field settings. In the dialog box you click on average, because this is what our manager asked for, so you can see you can choose from the summarize value field by several calculations. We're looking for the average now. Whilst with here, we want to change the number format as well, because if you look over here, that's not very appealing. So we click number format, we select currency, let's get rid of the decimal places and now depending on the system you're working on there might be a default currency in my case it's euros but we want the pounds the pounds might have been already pre-selected in your case if not select English pounds or British pounds now before we 
click OK, we want to have a new custom name because average of extended price is a quite a bulky title. So we replace it with average amount sold. Click OK. Now it shows in the values field, in the pivot table field list, the average amount sold. And here is the same thing. So what we see now is that Andrew has sold an average amount of 738. We don't know what the manager wants to do with this kind of information, but this is what he was asking for. Now let's let's change this. Now let's leave it because we will, in order to a answer our question, need the average amount. We don't know yet what products have not been shipped by Patriz yet. So we're going to add the salesperson to the report filter because we want to filter our pivot table by the name of the salesperson which is Patriz. You see that the filter has been added on top of here. Click on the down arrow and select Patriz. There you go. That's only part of the sales are now being shown by shipped dates and by product. And you can see that these three products have not been shipped yet. They don't have a shipped date. The average amount sold was 286. And it's the same three products as we've seen earlier on. Now your manager calls you again and wants an answer to a second question. He wants the number of the, the products sold in the first week by Patriz, in the first week of January by Patriz, average price and listed by company. No problem with the pivot table at all. We basically need another filter. So we need to take the shipped date and move it up here. And now we need to, before we select several dates, we have a list of, of all dates right here of all shipped dates but you could only m select one right here so we need to tick the box select multiple items before we do that you see that we can now select every date in the first week of January so click OK there you, see, uh, there you go these are the products which have been sold by Patriz in the first week of January and this is the average amount sold was 482 pounds. That's the average amount sold. Remember if we're interested in moving this back to the sum, all you need to do is value field settings, select the sum, click OK and then we see that he has a total, a total sold 1929 pounds. Now, all which is missing is that we have it listed by company. We have not done that yet. So we need to drag or we need to select the company name. And now it's very important how it's organized. You see that it is organized by product and then to which company it has been shipped to. However, our manager was asking for it the other way around. So let's drag the company name on top of the product name. So we just exchange positions and we see exactly what was required. Although we have changed the value field to sum and not average. Let's change this back to average. Know how to do this by now. Average amount sold. Okay, there. This is exactly what was requested from the manager listed by companies, the products which have been sold to those companies by Patrick Rech Patriz Rechberger in the first week of January. So well done. 
Now all we're going to do now is make this table look a bit nicer. So therefore we look at the contextual tab which has been invoked by Excel again. You know, you should know this from the other videos now that this happens with specific tools. And we're choosing the design tab. We can now add subtotals to the table. Let's do just that. And we want the subtotals at the bottom of the group. Now what happens? The subtotal has been moved from the top to the bottom of each subgroup. This provides a better picture of the situation. Let's add a specific style. You can choose any style you want. We're choosing pivot style medium 5 looks quite alright. Click on that. And to round it off we want banded rows which provides, especially when, when you want to print out the report for your for your manager, a nicer layout because it has provided these grid lines. These grid lines are not printed on the report but these are you can see one thing, I clicked outside the pivot table and the field list pane has disappeared. Don't panic, just click back in the table and the field list is back. Well done, that was it. Make sure to save the file and as you know you can rewind that video, you can repeat watching it. Well done.